Hello my lovely sewing friends, it's Catherine here and I'm very happy to welcome you to my sewing channel, Serenity Sews. Wonderful that so many of you are tuning in to follow what I'm doing with my sewing journey and I'm so happy that you're finding it useful um, and that really gives me encouragement to, to carry on and do more. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. And those of you who already have, once again, a huge, huge thank you. So today I'm here to do my little slot on um, So Frugal 2022, which is the brainchild of Sam, who is Frugalissima, and also Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl. So I'd really encourage you to have a look at the information about who's uh, introducing their video to go through their plans. Um, if you haven't already seen this challenge, there's a huge amount on uh, Instagram really directing you to who's doing what, when, and all the fantastic uh, so <coughs> gifts really um, that there are to win and once again you know so much generosity amongst the sewing community to people like me and others just really encourages us to keep going. So when I volunteered um, to do this video I've spent absolutely hours and hours looking through all of the free pattern resources that I'd had and um, the ones that had gone before and in the end I got kind of overwhelmed so I decided that the best place for me to start was what do I need to sew and what would I have done anyway and what fabric would I have taken out of my ginormous stash to um, sew during this month so I started from that premise I did um, have a good look though for you to see just what the independent pattern sites were offering in terms of free patterns and there are so many and too many to mention and uh, probably one of the most useful resources I came across is the sewing directory A to Z of independent pattern companies and that really really um, you can spend hours going through them all there are so so many now not all of them offer free patterns but there are um, a huge number that do some of the sites are not now functional because this was done I think in 2019 but just just take a look if you've got a few days where you're not going to do much it really is interesting to see what's on offer so as I said I wanted to look at what I needed to sew and ever since I watched Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door her sewing plans video she reminded me of what I needed to do this year which was focus on some outerwear and by outerwear, I mean um, kind of soft jackets. Um, I've already made a coat. I'm currently making a trench coat. And um, I want to put together through this year some of those outerwear garments that I know are going to last me a while, but also um, be appropriate for what I'm going to be doing nowadays. So I really like the look of quite a few patterns and I'm not I'm not going to um, make apologies for this but the sewing directory really again highlighted the fact that I enjoy a certain style um, and as I said I make no apologies for that. I'm just going to, excuse me a moment, I'm going to grab my pattern information for you. So I watched The Stitchy Wife the other day and um, 
Oh, in my mind at that point, I was going to make the same jacket that she had already selected. But then there's a couple of things else that I want to do, which is use up quite a bit of linen that I have because I can't justify buying any more, even though the colour that I've got is probably not what I've cho I would have chosen this year. But I went back and had a look on fabricstore.com and um, you, you must have from quite a few of the sewing vloggers, you must have come across this company because they offer a huge amount of free patterns and they do have the most beautiful uh, linen fabrics um, that I've probably seen anywhere. So I'll warn you before you have a look. What you have to do is make an account before you can actually download any of their patterns. But I mean, that's not an issue. It's really not a problem. And I selected at this point two of their, I suppose, top garments. And the first one I want to talk to you about is called the Nina Cardigan. And this is a loose linen over, well, it's not a jacket really, it is more like a cardigan, but it's made of linen with a tie at the front. And I like that because it's a little bit flowy. It's a way of covering up a bit if it's cooler. And we all know we live in the UK, so that's likely to be the event. The plain, uh, the back is very plain and that's kind of what I'm looking for and I'll tell you why in a moment. The size range is huge. They go from a size 33 bust right up to a 56 bust and it's, it's really inclusive in terms of the bust, waist and hip sizes too. They do um, say that their, their patterns are generally for a five foot eight model and I'm definitely not that so I do have to take that into account and they do give you a amount of fabric that you'll need for all of the sizes that are included and it actually says it's three yards um, which by my estimation is about 2.6 meters it's loose fitting it's got a tie closure along the bust it's got short wide sleeves and it's simply hemmed now just keep that in mind because i am going to show you some fabric in a second they recommend a lightweight linen and they recommend using a smooth finish just to give it that, um, I suppose, dressy appearance. Um, so I liked that one. And they do actually, if you click on it, they take you to the linen that is used on their website. So that's a nice, uh, nice idea, actually. Just have a sip one second. So that's the Nina cardigan. And then I came across this, this one, which is the Nino jacket. So it's a little bit confusing. Nina cardigan, Nino jacket. This is modern. It's contemporary. It's a little bit boxy shaped. And um, if I show you the back, you can see again, very plain, just above hip length. Um, I would say bracelet sleeve length. And I would also say that this is a, an incredibly simple um, shape and pattern. It's open fronted. There are no uh, closures on it. It does have front patch pockets, which is nice. And once again, it goes from a 33 bust up to a 50 
six bust and hip wise it's 35 up into a 58 so again a wide range now the size that i'm going to make uh, because the finished garment sizes which is the one i'm using to measure myself against because i measured my high bust is size 12 slash 14 and that requires two yards which again is about 1.8 meters so that's not bad actually for a jacket now in both of these and i suspect i know which one i'm going to use um i have got some this is a very lightweight um, linen and it's in sea mist colour. Nice, nice drape. So it's unstructured, um, but it'll hold if, um, if I need it to. And I can use obviously some interfacing in the areas where I want. Now, the reason I want to use this and I want a very plain jacket and I didn't choose the blazer is because I want to do some embroidery on it. Um, some of you may know I've got the creative icon um, sewing and embroidery machine and I decided it's time I started to use it on use the embroidery much more i have been doing little bits um but i really do need to uh, push myself and do something much more so i want to do some embroidery on the back um hence why the nino jacket i think has a nice um area where it is very plain but also no cut lines for back fitting. So as you can see, it hangs pretty flat. I'm tempted to say that I think I'll use this one and do a tiny bit of embroidery as well on the patch pockets. I'm not sure yet, but that's the direction I'm thinking. I know with the cardigan, um, again, I could do some little bits of embroidery on this one um i'll see i i am much more tempted by the nino jacket at the at the moment and i'm going to use this gorgeous uh soft but light weight i think it's about three and a half ounce weight linen and i've got i've got more than enough there so that's the first one or two things I'm going to do and then um, on again their website I came across a a top which is the simple linen tea it's a woven tea and you can't always find a top like this in a, a woven particularly a, a linen fabric um, and, and I really, really liked this style. It has um, a dropped back, boxy shaped again, a little um, closure at the back there, very unfussy, very much um, one that could be put underneath something like both of those tops um, and takes actually, um, again, a meter if that so fabric for that and i'm i'm kind of uh, havering between two at the moment I have got linen but i have some cotton lawn as well and because that is so uh, pretty such a pretty shade i found two cotton lawns that i think will actually complement that beautifully. So this is one I got from John Lewis's a long time ago. Um, and I think that blends in beautifully. But then this polka dot also um, is quite pretty. 
personally I'm more swaying towards this one let me know what you think um, but that's what I'm going to um, make for that simple linen t-shirt it's called a linen tee because it um, it's made very much to stand and to have that structure to stand out but but I think this will look absolutely lovely right now then an alternative for um, those jackets and a top I do have um, some of this blue this is called cerulean or cerulean yeah cerulean blue um, which is a, a kind of deep Greek blue, that gorgeous blue and white that they have. Now, this is slightly heavier. Um, and I may keep this to make the blazer um, once I've done these garments. But I just thought I'd show it to you because, again, gorgeous finish, nice um, body on it. And... I've got, again, some very pretty uh, cotton lawn. Again, this was from John Lewis's. And I thought these two would look great. I could get a dress out of this. And I thought if I made the blazer, um, a dress in this cotton lawn would look absolutely fit for summer. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see at the minute. The, the greeny colour is winning it for me. Right, uh, moving on. Now, um, I, I couldn't help but f go for another pattern whilst I was on there. And um, I found this one. It says it's a crisp linen pant. And I... And show you the line drawing which is just there I'm not too keen on elastic all the way round, and I think I'd modify that to make uh, flat fronted with elastic back but I do like the leg cut and I do like the fact that they're on fussy there's no pockets in them so if you're a pocket person this is not necessarily uh, good for you and once again, the size is hip wise, goes from a 36 right up to a 58. And they recommend um, two yards. So again, my, um, my estimation, that's about 1.7, 1.8. And they are loose fitting, so they're not meant to be uh, close to the skin. I have um, some white denim capri pants I suppose you'd call them so I didn't really want to go um, down the white linen route but I do have um, this linen which is an off-white um, I think this is called old white that's right and I think this would be perfect because it's got enough uh, structure and it's not too um, uh, opaque or it is opaque um yeah i i wouldn't line these i just wear appropriate underwear like most of us do in the summer um so i thought that would blend in really well with the green and the pretty cotton lawn top so I may, I may add that into the little ensemble because um, I really, really liked that pattern. So I'm not being very adventurous, but I have gone for what I need. And I think in terms of my frugality, that works for me. And it's actually getting out the fabrics that I have had in my stash and I want to use up um, this year. So um, I couldn't help but um, be absolutely blown away by a pattern that I think was on Sam's uh, video. I might be wrong, um, but 
you can tell me if I am. She had found a free blouse pattern called the Tilda blouse um, by a, a French fashion company, one that I absolutely love called Maison Fauve. There it is. And when I saw this, I thought, that is just me. I love it. Absolutely um, everything about it. It has tiny little gathers or pleats along the top of the sleeve. It has pleating down the centre and the cuffs um, come into a very narrow cuff again with gathers. This pattern company, um, again, you have to subscribe to them and then you get your free pattern. Not all the patterns are written in English, um, but this pattern is in both. So that's that's excellent. Here's the line drawings. So you've got the option to have a, a short sleeved version and the back closure is very simple, just like um, one button. And I like that. It goes from a size bust 34 to a 52 and the hip measurement is corresponding so you've got plenty of um, room in there to make the fit uh, right for you. They recommend using um, a light to medium weight fabric and I suppose it depends how you want it to look. Um, if you want something a bit more flowy then you're going to use a drapey viscose or perhaps a crepe or georgette. If you want something a little bit more um, substantial in terms of um, holding a shape then you're going to use something more along the lines of cotton, cotton poplin um, and uh, linen. So I'm going to make the long sleeve version in this one and it's it's actually incredibly um, economical in terms of fabric. For the short sleeve version it's one point two meters for the largest size so again you could get um, a top here out of one meter and for the uh, long sleeve version it's still only 1.5 so I have this gorgeous uh, fabric I've been desperate to make this up into something really pretty so you can see this I got from Andrea Beyond the Pink Door and um, this is a viscose but it's quite a, um, a good weight viscose I would say. I mean just look at those, those colours are just me and I'm thinking of making the blazer, the um, fabric store blazer and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of that version in um, this coral, very pale corally pink colour. Um, wouldn't that just go beautifully? Um, so that's that's one version that I might make. And another fabric that I've got, which again is a, this is um, another John Lewis fabric actually. It's a rayon, they say, and again, not quite as weighty as the one before, but still has um, a good amount of structure. So it would hold the shape nicely. Um, the thing with that is you won't necessarily see the nice uh, pleat work on the front. So I've got an idea that I might use this white linen which is very fine. This is what I'd call um, tablecloth linen. And I'm really sorry, I can't remember where I got this from. And again, what I'm tempted to do is to do some what's, what's called cut work. Now, I'm not promising that. I may make up a version in the um, viscose first. 
and then I'm going to have a try in this because one of the things I can do on the machine is using something like a winged needle and to do some cut work and I'm really keen to trial out some of those techniques and um, it would look so pretty in white with perhaps some lace inlaid um, yeah i'm making it sound like it's going to happen in a second and it's not i know that but um i've got got the technology i just need to have a practice and to speak to angela from so essential who is my guru in all things to do with this machine and see how i can make that work i'm happy i think with the embroidery on the jacket but for the blouse um, and the way I want it to look, um, a little bit more help, I think. The final um, thing I want to show you is again from Maison Fauve. And this is one I bought um, just because I loved it. And this is called the, the Dahlia blouse. I'm going to show you the line drawings, which make a lot more sense. I absolutely love this and I will make this. I don't know whether I'll get it made this month, but for sure I'm going to make it. This takes like this takes two meters of fabric fabric and it is written only in French, but I think I can cope with that and I'll work around it. This does need um, a flowy kind of um, viscose or crepe or something and I am desperate to use this again it's that blush pink wouldn't that just look gorgeous in that top very plain at the front but at the back as you can see there you've got detailing across there with a little opening and closure there and then you've got an inverted pleat with a scoop to the back oh, i just think it is gorgeous so i hope you've enjoyed my musings um please please have a look at all the details i will put the links down below so that you can take part in the challenge I hope I've given you a few ideas of things that you can do and I hope to goodness I'm going to be able to get these all sorted for you so that I can do a reveal on the 31st of March which is when we all um, flood Instagram with our wonderful garments. So my lovely sewing friends I'm going to say goodbye for now and i hope you find some of what i've done interesting and let me know if you've got any ideas about the things that i've said and thank you so much for tuning in and as ever um keep sewing bye for now <laughs>